subscribe to our YouTube channel, Joy Learning TV. Hello students, you are welcome to another exciting lesson on XHS Hour. This is General Agriculture for XHS 1. I am your facilitator, Ahima Frank. Today I'll be guiding you to learn about a very important topic in the field of agriculture. Agriculture is characterized by the use of simple tools like cutlasses, hooks, etc. This makes farming activities very tedious and tiring. So the focus of today's lesson is on farm mechanization, how we can mechanize the activities on the farm. So by the end of the lesson, you should be able to explain farm mechanization. Also, you should be able to outline the objectives of farm mechanization. Also, you should be able to state the benefit of farm mechanization, why we should even engage in farm mechanization at all. You should be able to talk about some of the benefits. Then lastly, you should be able to identify safety precautions to practice to prevent accident and other hazards on the farm. If you are ready, call a friend to join us as we explore what farm mechanization is all about. Farm mechanization refers to the use of tools and equipment operated either by the hand or by animals or by motorized power to perform farm operations. You can also define it to be the use of farm machinery, tools and equipment to either aid or partially replace human being as a source of energy to perform farm operations. So that is what farm mechanization is about. The use of machinery implement to either help humans to carry out farm activities or the use of some machinery to take human labor out of certain farming activities, which we will look at shortly. Objectives of farm mechanization. Why should we even focus on mechanizing activities on a farm? What do we stand to benefit? What is the motive for that? One, to remove drudgery from farm tasks. Drudgery refers to making farming activities more easier. Drudgery is all about the tediousness of the work. So if you want to mechanize your farm, then the idea of engaging in farm mechanization is to take away the tiring activities of agriculture. So that's one of the objectives. Another objective is to achieve timeliness of operation. Want to make sure that the farming activities that you undertake is done in a timely manner. You don't want to spend all the day on the farm. So that is one of the objectives of farm mechanization. Again, it is also to ensure that the tax that are carried out on a farm is done to a higher standard. That's another objective of farm mechanization. So if you look on your screen, you can see two images. The activity going on here is sowing, sowing of seeds. So if you look on the left side, you see a farmer sowing seeds manually. We can just imagine if you have 10 acres of land and you are going to sow by this means. 
you're not only going to use a day or two. You can even spend a week doing the activity of sewing. However, the image on your right, you see a seed drill mounted on a tractor and it's being used to sow seeds. So with this mechanized activity of sowing, within a short period of time, it's a matter of hours, you would finish sowing seeds on your 10 hectares of land. Unlike when you adopt the manual way of doing things. Another activity here is spraying. So on your screen, you see on the left image, the farmer has mounted a knapsack sprayer on his back. He's pumping and spraying his field. With 10 hectares of land, if you are to use this means of spraying your crops, it's going to take you a lot of time to finish the spraying activity. However, the image on your right shows a farmer using what is called a boom sprayer to spray his crops. Within a short period of time, it should be done. So you see, farm mechanization is all about achieving timeliness of operation. You're not going to spend the whole day on the field when you use boom sprayers. Even through the advancement of technology, now there are drones that are used for spraying the field instead of mounting a knapsack sprayer on your back. Another activity is going on here, and this is called plowing. So on the left side, the image that you see, the farmer is guiding animals to plow his field. You see there are a number of people that are assisting with this activity. You can see the farmer, his children, one, two, three, four. So many people are engaged in this activity. This is a very tiring process. You have to guide the animals throughout the field. As time goes on, the animal may even get tired. But if you adopt the use of a tractor and a disc plow, you see just one person, you mount your plow onto the tractor, the tractor operator will just finish everything for you. Achieving timeliness of operations is one of the key objectives of farm mechanization. Yet another activity on the farm, after cultivating your crops and harvesting, you need to, so what you see here, is shelling of maize, removing the grains from the cob. Our farmers do not have access to machines, so mostly they make use of their hands. And it takes a lot of time before they are able to shell grains from the cob. But the adoption of machinery like a maize sheller, as you can see on the right image on your screen, within a short period of time, you can finish this activity. And you can go and engage in any other activity that you have. You don't need to spend the whole day. You don't need to employ the services of a lot of people to assist you in shelling your maize. So again, farm mechanization ensures that operations are carried to a higher standard. It ensures that the tediousness of farm activities is dealt with. Also, timeliness of operation is also taken care of. Now, having said all of this, what do we stand to gain from farm mechanization? We mechanize farming activities. What are some of the things that you stand to gain? 
the first thing is it increased productivity per unit area of land and per worker. The use of machinery, you can carry out, can undertake a lot of activities within a short period of time. Instead of spending the whole day spraying just an acre of land with the use of a boom sprayer or a drum sprayer, within 30 minutes, later than hour, you are done spraying your one acre of land. So you are able to be productive. You are able to do your work very well. It also helps in increasing supply of food and raw materials. When you become more productive in carrying out the activities on the farm, it will also translate into increase in the yield of the crops that will either serve as a source of food for us or serve as a source of raw materials for industry. Yet another benefit of farm mechanization is improvement in water supply and water control systems in a farm. So through the use of irrigation systems, you are able to regulate the amount of water that is supplied to your crops. You are also able to ensure that you cultivate all year round because you've set up a system that ensures that plants get water at the appropriate time they need it. So if you look at the image, this is a form of drip irrigation system. So you see the crop is there, the pipes have been laid, there is a tube connected to the pipe and to the plant. So when it's time to water the crops, the farmer doesn't have to be with the plants. Just with the press of a button, the water will just be flowing, be flowing. And this one is directly to the base of the plant. So you don't waste water. You only give what the plants need. So you ensure that there is prudent management of the resources that is being used on the farm. Another benefit is to maximize yield. I've explained earlier, maximize yield of crops and animals by improving farm operations. So if you adopt farm machineries or implement, instead of going to do manual milking, there are machines for that, that can do milking of your animals for you. You don't have to expend a lot of energy in doing that. It also enhances processes of farm produce. So if you want to process your cassava into gari, you mostly use manual methods. But now there are machines that you can use to grate your cassava into the cassava dough. You don't have to expend a lot of energy on that. It also reduces cost of production associated with farming. Previously, if you need, if you want to cultivate 10 hectares of land, one farmer cannot clear the field. So you need to employ the services of other people to help you to clear your farm. If you want to sow, you need a lot of people to carry out the activity of sowing on the farm. Now with the use of seed drills, with the use of plows, you don't need so many people on your field. You don't need so many people on your field, it means you don't have to spend a lot of money paying them wages for coming to assist you or preparing food for them. So adoption of farm mechanization helps to reduce the cost of producing crops and the cost of keeping animals. It also makes continuous farming possible and achieve all year farming 
and production. So I mentioned earlier that through farm mechanization, you can set up irrigation systems that ensure the all year round availability of water. Our agriculture system is mostly rain fed. But through the adoption of machineries or irrigation systems, farm mechanization systems such as irrigation, you are able to cultivate crops all year round. So whether it is raining or not, you've put in place mechanisms that will allow you to continue to produce crops to feed the nation. Makes farming on a large scale possible. The use of machineries, tractors, bulldozers, excavators. You can clear large tracts of land within short periods of time. But same cannot be said of when you are using manual tools, simple tools like cutlasses, hoes. When will you finish clearing 10 hectares of land? It will take you days, weeks before that can be done. You have to get a lot of people to assist you and you have to pay them because it's not for free. But with the use of machineries, within short period of time, that will be done. So you make sure that farming on a large scale is possible. It promotes commercial farming. Anything that's good or uh, that has advantages is said to also have disadvantages. So let's look at the challenges that farm mechanization comes with. Number one, it displaces human labor, resulting in unemployment. So just as I explained earlier, if you want to cultivate 10 hectares of land, you will need a lot of people to assist you in clearing the land. You will need a lot of people to help you to undertake the activity of sowing seeds on 10 hectares of land. And the use of machineries like tractors, plows, seed drills. You can do that by yourself. Instead of employing the service of let's say 10, 15, 20 people, you may just need two or three people on your farm. So if you employ only two or three people, the other 10 or 15, where would they be? So one of the challenges of farm mechanization is it displaces human labor, resulting in unemployment. Another challenge with farm mechanization is it may destroy the structure of the soil. Because the machineries are heavy duty machines. They compact the soil. When it continues to use them as they move over the field, because of their weight, it can lead to what is called hard pan formation. This simply refers to the compaction of soil, which will reduce the aeration of the soil. And you know that oxygen in the soil is very important for proper growth and development of crops. So if the soil becomes too compacted, that the aeration of the soil reduces, that will affect the overall growth of the plant. So one of the challenges is it may destroy soil structure. Another shortcoming of farm mechanization is the fumes from machinery pollute the environment. Some of the tractors produce a lot of fumes and this can lead to air pollution. Also, it is expensive to practice because the cost of the machinery is high. Take a tractor. Tractor is worth in excess of 50,000 Ghana cities. I mean, that may even be a second-hand tractor. If you want a brand new, you have to spend a lot of money. And not many people, especially our farmers, can afford 
to purchase such machinery. So it is expensive to practice farm mechanization. It also required skilled labor to operate and maintain. You need people who know how to move a tractor, who know how to maintain. In the event that it breaks down, you need somebody with skilled knowledge be able to repair the tractor and ensures that it is in good condition to continue to support the farming activities. So these are some of the challenges that comes with farm mechanization. So on your screen, you see a tractor. Just look at the fumes that is coming from it. So as you continue to engage in these activities, certainly it will lead to the pollution of the air. The image on your right, through the use of this machinery, it is going to, you can see that the soil here is different from the one here. This one, it's being compacted. So as the machine moves over it, over time, the aeration will reduce. It becomes so compacted that it will be very difficult to support plant growth. So these are some of the challenges associated with farm mechanization. Now let's look at some safety precautions to prevent accidents and other hazards on the farm. So we'll look at the precaution that you need to take on the farm when you are using farm machinery, also electricity, we'll talk about agrochemicals, we'll look at draught animals, we'll look at sharp tools, ladders, and many more. So let's start with farm machinery. What are some of the things you need to bear in mind when using farm machinery? The first thing is, never start a machine without knowledge of how to operate. We've just learned that farm mechanization, one of the challenges is that it required skilled operators, people who know how to move the machines. So don't go and start. Don't be tempted to start a machine that you have no knowledge of how to move it. It may result in an accident. So that is one of the precautions that you need to adhere to when you are using farm machinery. Another is do not touch any moving part of a machine. Do not touch any moving part of a machine, especially when it's in use. You may lose your fingers. So don't be tempted at all. Under no circumstance should you attempt to touch any moving part of a machine. Another thing you need to take note is that tools and equipment should be used for their intended purposes. We are found of finding so many use for the tools that we have, probably because we can't afford to purchase all the tools that we need. So you just find one thing. A cutlass is used to weed, cutlass is used for transplanting, cutlass is used for digging, for so many things. But there are tools that are used for transplanting seedlings. There are tools that are used for digging. So make sure that the tools and equipment that you have on your farm is being used for the purpose for which it was designed. Again, implements should be properly mounted on tractors to prevent accident. So if we take an implement like plow, plow does not come together with a tractor. So you have to attach it to a tractor before it can be used 
on your farm. And one of the important things that you need to take note of is that ensure that it is firmly attached to the tractor before you move it. Ensure that is done. Because if it is loosely attached whilst you're working, it may come off, it may hurt somebody, and you don't want that to happen. So ensure that implements are properly mounted on tractors to prevent accident. Also, do not attempt to repair any electrical system or part of a machine unless you have the competence to do so. Don't attempt to do something that you have no knowledge of. Employ the services of people who are trained to repair machineries. So in the event that machinery breaks down, it is very important that you engage the services of repairers, people who have undergone proper training to assist you to do that. Don't attempt to do those things without having knowledge. Another thing you need to bear in mind is do not start a machine in a garage with limited ventilation. Why do you think this point is so important? Your guesses are good and mine. Yes, if you start a machine in a garage, the fumes, the fumes can cause health problems, especially if you are with people who are asthmatic. And also, more importantly, if the ventilation in the garage is very poor, when you start machine, the machine, the fumes coming from it may cause health problems to people who are asthmatic. So you need to be careful when you are starting. In fact, don't even start it at all. Make sure that the garage has proper ventilation before you engage in some of these activities. Do not use machine when drunk. Do not use a machine when drunk. I know you are a good student. None of you is an alcoholic. So this one is for the general public. Do not use machine when drunk. You've heard of the advert. If you drink, you don't drive at all. A drunk person loses his or her sense of judgment, his or her sense of coordination. And if they use machine, they can cause injury to themselves and to others. So in order to forestall that, you make sure that a drunk person doesn't come close to using machine. Also, never top up fuel when the machine is still running. So when the engine of the machine is still running, don't top up fuel. If you do that, it may lead to outbreak of fire. And I'm sure you don't want that to happen. So make sure that it's not done. Another important thing you want to ensure before you use your machine is check and maintain correct tire pressure. Make sure that the tire pressure of the tires of the machines is what is required. You don't want to be on your farm in the middle of engaging an activity, then you have flat tire. The pressure reduces and you have to go back and you no, know, it will just be wasting your time. So you can see a machinery, a tractor on your screen. So make sure that this ties, the pressure in them is at the recommended level before you move it. Also, you've learned that you should not move machines like this when you do not know how to do so. Always engage the services of people who have the competence to undertake such activities. Aside from machinery, in terms of the use of electricity, 
there are some safety measures that you need to adhere to. First, make sure that exposed conductors should be what? Insulated. And make sure you cover it as soon as you see it. So anything that can conduct electricity, if it's exposed, make sure that those things are covered. Make sure you take the necessary steps to ensure that they will not lead to the electrocution of yourself or anybody who may happen to be on the farm. Also, never allow bare wires to touch each other. If you do that, what will happen? Yes. You'll be shocked. Make sure you insulate them. You use tape, insulating tape to cover it. You separate it, use insulating tape to cover the exposed wires. Also, conductors and apparatus used for electrical wiring should be of good quality and size for the current they are expected to carry. Make sure that you do not compromise the quality of the materials that is needed for wiring on, in your farmstead. Under no circumstance should you compromise that. Make sure you have sufficient funds to buy materials of high quality, of high quality. Don't say because this one, the price is a little bit cheaper, so I'll go for it. Make sure the one you are purchasing is of good quality. Buy quality goods. Do not touch or print electrical gadget with wet hands. If you do that, what do you think will happen? Exactly. You'll be electrocuted. Why? Because water is a good conductor of electricity. So if your hands are wet with water and you touch any electrical device, the possibility of being electrocuted is high. And I don't think you want to risk that. Also, do not put many appliances into one socket. This is to ensure that you avoid overloading. Many of us are fond of doing that, trying to plug everything, put everything there. So just look at something like this. Wow, look. Just look at it. This small wall socket, a lot of things have been plugged in it. If you continue to do that, you are putting so much pressure on it. And it may not have the capacity to carry the current that is flowing through it. And if that is the case, the possibility of an outbreak of fire too is high. So we should, you should make sure that some of these things are not done. Agrochemicals, agrochemicals. In the use of agrochemicals, there are things that you need to take cognizance of. Don't ever lose sight of it. Number one is read labels on containers. Always, before you buy them, you need to know what you are buying whether it is poisonous or not, you need to know. And thankfully, most of these agrochemical companies, they've placed labels on their product so you can read for yourself and be sure that what you are purchasing is what you need for whatever activity you want to undertake on your farm. Also, they should be kept away from the rich of children. You know, children are fond of putting things in their mouth. 
they may not know this is a harmful material. They may be tempted to put them in their mouth. So make sure that there is no possibility for them to reach such dangerous material or harmful chemicals. Also, never pour or rinse chemical containers in water bodies. If you do that, you are going to contaminate the water. And those who depend on the water, they may have challenges. I mean, the aquatic life in the water bodies may be threatened because these chemicals are poisonous. So if you want to rinse the containers, go and fetch the water and do that far away from water bodies, like streams, ponds, rivers, etc. Don't ever rinse a container containing or full of chemicals close to a water body. Never do that. Again, make sure you wear protective clothing. Gloves, nose marks, overalls, when you are using agrochemicals. Make sure you wear something to protect yourself, your eyes, your nose, your mouth, your hands, your whole body. Make sure you have a protective clothing on. Another thing you need to be aware of is never taste any mixture to check the level of concentration of the chemicals before using it. Don't tempt. Don't try to dip your finger in it and bring it to your mouth to taste it. No. Don't do it at all. Don't do it. If you engage in such an activity, we may come to your funeral. Don't try it at all. If you want to know the concentration, read the label. You will see everything there. If it is not there, contact the company. Never under any circumstance should you attempt to taste the concentration of a chemical. Never do that. They are harmful. Also, always use recommended concentration or dosage of agrochemicals and strictly adhere to them. So if it is written on the label that use a liter, 10 milliliters of this quantity of that, make sure you adhere to it. Make sure you adhere to that. Don't go and be doing whatever you like. Also, wash the spray machine when you are done, then take your bath immediately after working. Make sure that you've washed away all the chemicals that may have fallen on your skin. Wash everything away. Wash your hands thoroughly with soap and running water before you even eat. So let's look at the image on your screen. This is labeled of an agrochemical. That is a herbicide. So when you look at it, you see that there are some instructions. It is written here, risk and safety information. You can also see they've written toxic to aquatic organisms may cause long-term adverse effect in the aquatic environment. It has also been indicated here, risk of serious damage to eyes. So you see, the label will give you very important information as to how to use them and what the danger it comes with using such product. So let's read a few of them before we move on. So when using, do not eat, drink, or smoke. So you see, the label is telling you what to do and what not to do. Again, it tells you keep out of reach of children. Keep away from food, drink, and animal feeding stuff. Why are they telling you all this? 
they know it is a very harmful chemical and it is not meant for you to have any contact with food, the drink, and even the feed of animals. Let's read the last thing here. It said, to avoid risk to man and the environment, comply with the instructions for use. So always make sure that you read the labels on your agrochemicals before you use them. Adhere strictly to the instructions on it. Don't do anything that you like. Now let's look at how, the, how to use drought animals. And drought animals refer to animals that we use in carrying our farm activities like plowing, conveying goods from the farm to the house to the market. When we are using these animals, what are some of the safety measures you need to take? Number one, animals should be properly muzzled to prevent them from harming the operator and eating during the use, during their use for farm operations. You don't want the animals to be feeding. So we saw earlier a farmer using donkeys to plow the field. You have to make sure that you cover the mouth of the animal. That is what muzzled means, so that they don't feed. And they just focus on the work. Also, animals should be regularly dehorned and their hooves should be cut short to prevent accident. They can use their horns to cause injury, even to you as the farmer and to other animals. When you are using them, make sure that they are properly dehorned. The hooves are also cut. Also, the animals, and if make sure that you feed them properly. They should be well fed. Don't send hungry animals to the field. They may pose a danger to yourself. Also, animals are noted for kicking. So make sure that in their use, you know where to be when using them. Again, do not use them, especially in the sun. Even humans, we do not like working in the sun. Let's treat the animals with respect. So make sure you care for them, feed them well, take care of them well. Don't use them when the sun is too scorchy. So on your screen, you see a muzzled animal. The mouth of the animal is covered. That is to prevent it from feeding. Whereas the activity of plowing or whatever the farmer is using the animal for is ongoing. Precautions when using sharp tools. Make sure the tool is wet. Wet here means sharpened. Make sure you sharpen it regularly. You don't want to be using blunt tools for work. Do not leave them lying about. They may cause injury to somebody. Pack them well after use. Use them for their design purpose. I've already explained this. Also, the metal parts should be greased properly. Make sure after use, the metal parts of sharp object is oiled. That is to prevent rusting, rusting from taking place. So make sure you oil the metal part. When using ladder, you should make sure that it is firm and is also placed on a level surface. Also make sure that it is long enough for the work you want to use it for. Again, it should always be in good state. Don't be tempted to use a rickety ladder. You may fall down and that will also bring a whole lot of issues. Also, when you are ascending and descending the steps 
of the ladder. Do that cautiously. Make sure you watch your steps. Because in the event of a misstep, that will also lead to an injury. You may fall down. So you take note of that. Also, whilst using a ladder, do not try to stretch your arm to where you cannot reach. Again, when working on the ladder, get someone to hold it for you. So if you look at the images on your screen, the left side, you see a ladder. Next one has been placed against a pole here, if you can see it clearly, to provide support. So if they want to plug fruit or whatever, you can climb it. But prefer preferably, it is better to get somebody to support you. But if you have the ladder on the right, that one is good. It will give you proper balance. So you are not likely to fall down when using such Do not smoke cigarettes near flammable materials. If you do that, it may, you may not know. Mistakenly, you may forget yourself and leave the cigarette somewhere. And that can lead to an outbreak of fire. You know, flammable, inflammable materials catches fire quickly. Also, burn waste materials only when it is not too windy. When you do that during windy times or windy conditions, strong winds may carry some of the burning materials to unwanted places, and that will cause a lot of problems. Again, ensure that you have fire extinguishers so that in times of emergency, you fall on it to quickly deal with any fire on the fire. Code of dressing. Yes, on a farm, there should be appropriate code of dressing. When we go for parties, they tell us what we should wear. When you are coming to the farm too, there are types of clothes that you should put on. Number one, you shouldn't wear loose clothing at all on the farm. When you do that, because of the spaces, the cloth, it can just be locked up somewhere. Something can just lock it up and you may even fall down. So make sure that you wear tight fitting clothes. Again, wrist watches, jewelry, things that can cause shocks should not be worn whilst you're working. What do you need wrist watch for when you are working on a farm? Just put it at home. When you come back, you can look at it, or you can even put it in your pocket. So the general safety precaution, do not lift heavy objects all by yourself. Always make sure that there's someone to assist you. If you continue to lift heavy objects, in no time, you may have challenges with your spine. So make sure that somebody aches always present to assist you to lift heavy objects. Wear protective clothing. I've already explained this. Make sure tools, handles of tools, are always repaired to avoid blisters. So if the handle of your cutlass, of your hole, is faulty or there's a problem with it, make sure that you repair it before you use it. Competent machine operators should be employed. Engage the service of people who have undergone training and have the skill of using these machines. Engage their services. Also, wash your hands after work and before eating. We've explained why you should do that. Also, adhere to manufacturer's instructions. That has also been thoroughly explained. Replace worn out parts of machines. Replace worn out parts of machines to ensure the smooth running 
of the machines. And lastly, first aid and first aid box. So when you experience minor cut, make sure you cover it with a clean cloth and ap apply pressure on it for about 10 minutes to stop bleeding. If after 10 minutes, the bleeding does not stop, quickly visit a health facility for assistance. Also clean any parts of the body that gets into contact with agrochemicals, with water. Quickly do that. Also, when the body experiences irritation, like some plants, remove your cloth and bath immediately with soap and also apply ointment, you'll be better. Then lastly, make sure that you provide first aid box containing items like bandage, scissors, mutilated spirit, and other drugs to dress wounds. So today we've talked about the need to mechanize the activities on the farm. We've looked at the objectives of farm mechanization, the benefits we stand to gain from adopting farm mechanization. We've also looked at the challenges that comes with farm mechanization. We learned it can lead to the unemployment of some people. It may also destroy the soil structure. We've also looked at safety precautions that we need to undertake when using farm machinery, agrochemicals, animals on the field, ladders, sharp tools, among many others. So take your book and write these questions as an exercise. So question one, state five importance of farm mechanization. I'm sure this one is easy. You'll be able to do it. Also, state five safety precautions to observe when using agrochemicals. This brings us to the end of today's lesson. I hope you find the lesson informative and exciting. I've been your facilitator, Hima Frank, until we meet another time. Keep learning and stay safe. Bye bye. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Joy Learning TV.